Spring Benson here, and I'm stoked to have you join us on Real Estate Real Life. Success in real estate and life is 80% mindset and 20% strategy. This podcast goes deep into the mind of top real estate entrepreneurs, CEOs, and mindset coaches across the country who are downright dominating their space and thriving in their lives and business. Tune in each week to learn how the best in the business are building systems that work for them and creating incredible opportunity and freedom in both their lives and businesses. Hey everyone, it's Spring Benson. Welcome to our podcast. Today's guest is Josh Cunningham with Rockerbox. Uh, Josh Cunningham is the CEO and founder of Rockerbox. For all of you guys that do not know what Rockerbox is, it's a inside sales company that um, basically takes your internet leads and nurtures them and scrubs them uh, so that you can have real-time response and then sends them back to you when they are ready to purchase. So welcome, Josh. Thank you so much, Spring. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be the first guest on your podcast. (laughs) Thank you. So um, for all of you guys that do or don't know, Josh is one of my dear friends. And um, I told him that I had this idea of wanting to start a podcast about real life and real estate. And I thought of him because we've gone through so much real life and real estate together, right? We basically built our companies together. And um, Josh is such a phenomenal uh, human. And so, and as well as his business is a phenomenal business. So I wanted to kind of chat today a little bit of how you got started. Because I think um, as we get into our businesses as entrepreneurs or in real estate, we forget people see how big, like I'm looking at you right now and your office is freaking huge and beautiful and you can see the trees in the windows, you know, and, um, and, I, and I know where you started. And so right. I um, really wanted to kind of talk to, about that journey of how you started it and how you've gotten today to this huge multi-million dollar company, um, as well as kind of dive into where we're at in the online lead space right now. If anybody understands that it's you and, um, and talk about as agents, if you're going to play in that arena what you they need to be doing to be successful. So thank you so much for being my first person. Absolutely. <laughs> it is my yes. pleasure. Thanks. So tell me about how you, um, t- how you started this, like where you saw the need and how it got um, started. That's so if, it, if the, if the, um, if the podcast theme is we're getting real with it, then we're going to talk about some of our failures because that's, that's where you learn the most. Right. Uh, yeah. When things are always going right all the time, you don't necessarily get uh, get to learn some some lessons and move forward. So, um, well, our history kind of got started um, back in 2011. I was working at Viral Marketing with Frank Klesitz, and you were a client of Viral Marketing, and um, I was helping you shoot videos just to stay in touch with your database to get referral and repeat business. But um, we had connected at, uh, what was the first time? It was in Vegas. It was at KW Masterminds, right? That's right. Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yep. and you were that a client. Was a, that was an epic trick, just yep. so you know. Like, Vegas solidifies or breaks all friendships. <laughs> it, it solidified ours. Yep. So we, yeah. we were having a client dinner, and I probably sent you a text. And I don't think you could make it to the dinner, but Frank and I went out to the nightclub afterwards, and you and a handful of other realtors came out and we, we, uh, we definitely celebrated until the sun came up. So that was, that was a good first, uh, first impression, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, if I remember that, not that the audience cares, but I think that the group we were with, we didn't separate the whole time. Like yep. We, yep. we partied till the sun came up and then we hung out the whole rest of the weekend. So yep. that was fun. Yeah. But I, but I remember very specifically the, the club we were at, uh, Hyde at the Bellagio, it's one of those weird clubs where they, they don't have the, it's not the unisex bathroom, but it's the unisex wash area. So I went to the bathroom at one point in the night and you went to the bathroom at one point in the night and I come walking around the corner and I hear you and another realtor and they're looking in the mirror doing affirmations, right? <laughs> We're going to own this. This is ours. This is world domination. And so I came up behind y'all and we were doing affirmations there in the, in the mirror at the Las Vegas nightclub scene. World domination. <laughs> remember that? World domi- I do remember the world, world domination now that you say that. And you know what? Yeah. Hey, it was true. That's our yep. goal, right? Yep. We're getting exactly. there. 
one, one transaction at a time. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a little fun, uh, fun real side of of kind of how we first met. But um, I do remember one of the first trips I came out to Utah. Um, I flew out there because you had some studio time booked, and you were going to work on building a whole video library for a home buyer sequence. And I was just out there to help you coach you on your videos. And you were like, hey, I'm going to take my buyer's agent out to lunch. And would you like, um, kind of like give him some suggestions about what he's not doing in my Boomtown account? Because you showed me his Boomtown account. He was making like one or two calls to, to you know, a handful of people. And you're like, he's a closer, but he never calls people. Do you remember that? Oh, I actually do now, but yep. at the time, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it was just like, it was just total in passing, like, hey, could you maybe give him some clues as to what he needs to be doing from what you've heard from all the other top realtors that you work with? And so that was kind of one of the, one of the seeds got planted and because we were just working on video stuff at the time, but we kept talking about it month after month and your agents were just doing a miserable job of following up with their leads. And it got to the point where you were like, I think I'm going to dump Boomtown. And I was like, no, you should hire an ISA. And then that's yeah. when you said, right. Yeah. So I said, Josh, if it's that easy, why don't you freaking do it? That yep. was my exact, yep. that was my exact. Yeah. Yep. So that was, that but, was kind of but, but, the, but the reason for that was, is I was struggling so hard with the accountability part, right? I mean, the, the, the thing about the online leads, and I will dive into this a little bit more, is, as you know, when you do a forced registration, or a Zillow or Realtor.com, I mean, Zillow or Realtor.com are going to be a higher level of lead, but they're, they're scrubbing, you know, they're trying to get a hold of them. And so getting them to call back more than one time, just, it, it's brutal, mm -hmm. right? So um, babysitting these agents to follow up on, on these leads, like they want leads, right? Yep. But then you give them the leads and then you have to babysit them to freaking follow up on them. And yep. so it, I, it, that was a massive struggle for me. So, yep. and, I'll, yeah. and I'll even get sidetracked here as well. You talked about Realtor and Zillow being a better quality lead than, you know, pay-per-click. Just to elaborate on that because I get asked this all the time, like what's the best lead source? You got to think about the call to action. That's what marketing is all about, right? Like right. it's it's what call to action do they respond to? Well, with Zillow and Realtor, people go on there and browse all day long without that forced registration like Spring's talking about. They can just browse and browse and browse all day. So the call to action on a Realtor or Zillow lead is normally, I want to go look at 123 Main Street. So it's yeah. a much higher level of engagement versus someone who just landed on your website because they're browsing to search for homes in your local area they look at three pictures of a home and then the prompt comes up. And if you read the squeeze on your website, it asks something along the lines of, do you want to keep looking at pictures of homes? Right. That's the, that's the question they answered yes to. It doesn't say, do you want to buy a home and want to be contacted by a realtor? It says, do you want us to stalk you? you want to, yeah. You want to keep looking at pictures of homes on here. So you're getting, a, yeah. you're casting a wider net of people that aren't necessarily as engaged. So then the scrubbing starts then the accountability starts, right? That's where the frustration begins. Right. So I said to you, sure, if it's that easy, Josh, why don't you freaking do it? And you said, yep. sure, yep. I will. <laughs> yep. I, have, I have a picture here of us from Red Day. I'm going to share this. Oh from my, my gosh. Uh, from 2013 is when this was. Mm -hmm. I always show this in my presentations. Can you see that? That's so funny. And you know, the funny part about this is, so what happened though, actually, is so we attempted to bring an inside sales agent in-house and um, it's the girl that was over, she's next to me in that mm -hmm. photo. Yep. Yeah. And after a few weeks, two or three weeks, um, she, and she was licensed, uh, she came to me and was like, I'm sick of him calling me all the time, checking in on me, which that was your job, right? Yeah. And yep. to do a morning huddle with him. And, um, and she's like, I think I just want to be an agent. Cause she was seeing the conversion happening, right? She was passing off the leads to the agents. Yep. And so we, we transitioned her into, that's when I called you and I was like, Oh my gosh. And, um, we transitioned her into sales and then you took it over. And I remember you working from your one bedroom studio that you lived in. I mean, you were fresh out of college or close, not fresh. Yeah, no, I had, I had, I had bar originally, I heard, originally I borrowed, I started making phone calls out of my, uh, out, of, out of the home that I lived in. But then I started working out of one of my friend's real estate offices, which was quite an upgrade because she had a really nice real estate office, a really nice team. I've got some pictures here too. 
Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, so this was actually quite an upgrade. Look at that. Very nice. Fancy. There's actually a lamp. <laughs> right? like that, was, that, was, that was the good days. There's me. There's, there's the whole world, world headquarters, the me, <laughs> myself, and I operation. Um, oh, but, uh, but when I first moved into, this was my pride and joy, right? So I moved out of this nice office um, in July. I worked there for a couple months. And then I moved into, ta-da, this glorious uh, world headquarters right here. This is the one room office that you're thinking about and all of its yeah. Plans. So wow. it was, uh, there, was a, there was a bunch of office suites uh, upstairs actually from where we're at right now. And it was just a bunch of small little 10 foot by 10 foot rooms. And the landlord's like, well, we can put a lock on this door and I'll rent you this room out. <laughs> and, I love and, it. Yeah, so I brought some old furniture from my, from my house and hand built that desk there and uh, started making calls for you. And, uh, yeah. So obviously you like have this huge operation now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's obviously a massive need in the real estate space and it didn't happen overnight. Like the, to have you build this company took, how long do you think? And you're obviously still building it, but to get yeah. to where you're at today. So the, that picture right there is from January, 2015 um, mm -hmm. was when we basically moved into our own office. And at that point, that's when we started taking our um, actual solution to the market. So I basically spent the first year and a half, like hunkering down and making phone calls myself, uh, learning scripts, learning dialogues, going and, and, and investing in trainings and courses and coaches and going and, and volunteering my time. Here's one of the greatest ways to learn guys is offer your services for free. Um, I, I, I was uh, linked up with a lot of the top real estate agents across the country and was able to just go learn from them by offering to go and work for them for free. Go make calls yeah. for someone. That's a really good way to learn how to make phone calls. I remember that. I remember yep. you winning, to, you went to Greg Harrelson's office. Greg Harrelson, which, um, worked with Tim and, Heil a lot as well. Yep. Yeah, and I remember you just going there for two or three weeks yep. and just going into his environment. And then I would mm -hmm. pick your brain and you say, Spring, you know what you need to do? And I'm like, uh, my drunk monkey is what we call it. Like, oh, that would never work here. I can never have that. And it's actually funny because that's not what I have, right? Yep. Like, we have the stand up decks, everybody's out there making their calls. Um, mm -hmm. Like, we had this structure. I was just so, um, I just, it wasn't my thing back then yep. because I was so ignorant around it. Right. It seems yep. so, in, it seems so impossible to me. And now I've been exposed to it enough. I'm like, that's the name of the game. You yeah. Know? I think if there's, I think if there's a general theme here but between, you know, your business growing and my business growing is it's, it's one step at a time, you know? Yeah. Again, it's, it's, it's super, like I was just having a conversation with someone the other day, July 1st, 2019 was our, our um, six year anniversary because that was when I first started making calls for you was July 1st, 2013. So I was telling someone that, wow, here, here we are six years later. And I was, I was telling someone if I could, I could catch a glimpse of what I can see right now. And I showed that to myself six years ago and said, here, this is your challenge. Are you up to this? Like, I honestly would have been scared out of my shoes because it, it looks very intimidating. It looks, yeah. the, the growth becomes exponential, but I got to tell you the theme here is it's one step at a time. Because again, what you're talking about from your perspective was back at that picture when your team was a handful of people. Mm -hmm. So just thinking about make, growth happens one step at a time, you know, one inch at a time, one day at a time. So it's not about making these huge like strides. Like I could, I could when I when I first said spring, I'm going to solve this for you. My first step wasn't to run out and hire 50 people. No, yeah. my first step was to go out and start doing it myself, right? And yeah. learn mm -hmm. one step at a time. I do, then we do, and then you do. That's kind of the kind of the theme. I think that's a really good advice because I see a lot of agents that are like, okay, well, I just I can't relate, or that's not me, or I'm never going to be there, or I don't want that. And it's like, okay, well, do you to the level that you envision, and then once you get to that, you plateau, right? Mm -hmm. And then you just start going to that next level. And so, mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. I think the other thing is is just taking little nuggets. Like it feels like everybody who is learning based, if you're listening to this today, take one or two little nuggets that you're going to implement and then you've done good. A mm -hmm. lot of it is that I think we go to these conferences or people like, I don't know how to do that. And they go and they learn and then they don't execute. Yeah. So everything that we've always done to go to this next level is because we've taken something we've mentored under somebody or we've listened or we've sought out, like think mm -hmm. about how many mentors we've sought out. I actually spent, I just hired a new um, marketing guy, a new video, um, person. I actually emailed Frank Klesitz and I was like, 
hey, I need help. Who do you know? You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's just being purposeful of just reaching out to people and being like, somebody has done this before me. So who, and find out who's willing to help you with it. So, yeah. Okay. So fast forward, you're servicing however many internet leads, how many internet leads come through your system a year, would you say? So we've, we estimate at this point that we've handled over 2 million internet leads over the last six years. Okay. Uh, and we've hired and trained over 250, um, ISAs. Okay. So the internet space is really noisy, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of chatter in the industry of what's going on there. Should I spend my money there? What should I do? And so what, tell me kind of what you're seeing in that space okay. and then what you would recommend if somebody is, because in my opinion, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, like for me personally, when I want to know anything, I Google it. Mm -hmm. Right. So everybody is going to the internet for any type of, I don't want to say everybody, but 95% of people are going to the internet to search for homes or for information. So the internet's not going anywhere. I think it's learning how to play the game so that, yep. it, is, so that it is something that is profitable in your business. Because I know a lot of people that play the game and they lose a ton of money at it. Yep. yep. Right? Yep. So maybe so tell got, us a little bit what you're seeing. Yeah. First, I have a slide here um, that I've been sharing for quite some time here. And this explains the sort of uh, kind of the, the crisis that's going on in, um, in online lead, in online lead market. Um, okay. For those of you who have been in the game for a really long period of time, the number of homes that have been selling over the last 10 years hasn't really changed that much between four and five million year after year. Uh, but what has changed significantly is the number of registrations. So um, back in the early days, you know, 2011 spring, you were one of the first pioneers to have, you know, a, a lead gen website. If you rewind the clock a few more years back to 2007, there was actually less online leads than there were than there were homes sold. So if you think about that, that gave people a false sense of exclusivity. What it really was right. is there was not the search to keep up with it. Well, now the search has caught up with it and exceeded it at an exponential rate. So now there's uh, hundreds of millions of registrations that are created and sold to realtors, um, but you have the same number of homes that are being sold. So that one person who, who's actually in a home search and is actually going to buy one home and one realtor is actually going to earn one commission might turn up to be 19 different registrations and sold to 19 different real estate agents. So that's why it's insanely competitive. And that's where a lot of people get scared. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that if you're not doing your math, you're not calculating your ROI, a lot of people are, there's a huge void there. There's a huge gap and that's all the people losing money. Um, mm -hmm. so a lot of people are in the business and they don't realize that they're losing money because they're not following up the leads the correct way. So, um, I would, I would think, I would think too, a lot of team owners are losing money on the leads cause they're not paying attention by the time they pay for the lead and then they're paying the split to their agent and the cost mm -hmm. of the lead and everything else. Mm -hmm. Like that, the ROI, it might have made a transaction, but it didn't mean that it actually made a profit. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so there's more leads. So your slide for those are on the podcast. Um, the slide showed like 125 million online leads and there's roughly about 5 million sales a year is what the slide. So there's about 25, like you said, 19 to 25 registrations. So what do you suggest? Cause it's not going anywhere. So mm -hmm. what do you suggest for best practices that you're seeing for people who want to be in that space? So, um, you know, to kind of continue along here with uh, a couple, um, a couple facts. Uh, one of the things I do every year is I scrub the NAR report that they put out for, um, the, all the home buyers that they survey. And so, um, these are the updated stats from, from last year, but basically the question is, should you just give up on internet leads? Obviously not. 95% uh, of all home buyers are still using the internet to search for homes. And not only are they using it to search for homes, for a lot of them, it's the, actually the first step that they're taking. So as you can see here, 42% of people, the first step taken in, in buying a, part, a home is to actually look online versus look, yeah. at, look at it for a realtor. So again, think about the keywords that you're buying here. You're not buying realtors for hire in blank town. No, you're, you're buying the keywords homes for sale in blank town. Like they're going, they're going for the product first. You're the service. And that's another myth in real estate. A lot of people don't understand that you don't actually sell homes. What you sell is professional services. So you're interrupting someone in their search for a product to provide them your services. 
right? Right. Uh, and so this is, this is uh, another fascinating statistic that kind of alludes to the decision-making process of a home buyer. And it's a, it's a multiple choice answer. They're asked, hey, what was the primary reason for the timing of your home purchase? And every single year, this is always number one, like leaps and bounds above all the other answers, which are like, you know, pricing or financing or inventory, like logical based reasons for why you would make the, the most expensive purchase in your entire life. But the number one reason year after year is it's just the right time. Word for word, it was just the right time for me. Wow. Does that sound like a logical based decision or an emotional based decision? Emotional. And you know what? I've seen that before and I've thought, now that I think about it, the last few homes I bought were a hundred percent emotional. <laughs> You're laughing because you know the stories on yep. it. Yep. Um, like Let's get real. <laughs> one, one million percent. One day I was like, you know what? I, I had gone through a divorce. I'd lived in a rental for a few years and I was like, today is the day. I think I'm just going to go buy a house. And I, you guys, as a realtor, Josh always makes fun of me. He actually said this. He's like, you are every realtor's worst nightmare because I'm in the industry. I know what I know what I'm doing. And I literally walked into the model home, worked with the model home agent and bought the bought a spec home that day instead of calling one of my resources. So if I'll do it, your clients will do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that is where the whole follow-up process. If I had an agent who was actually following up with me, hence a builder agent that actually tried to build some rapport with me, right? Yep. Um, I probably wouldn't have done that. Yep. But it's, it's the same, it's the same dialogue that we have as consumer. Like I didn't feel that need that I needed to do that at that time. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not going anywhere. People are emotional about it. So what do you suggest? Well, the real key to success is you got to make a bunch of phone calls. Um, and I'm going to skip a couple slides here um, just to the, the, the media that converts. And um, again, this is six years of, um, of data that we've looked at. Again, the time that you want to reach them is when they're in that emotional peak state. Something caused them to go to the internet, to type in your keywords, to search on your site, and to actually put in their name, phone, or an email address. That's when you need to get a hold of them. So it's very difficult for a lot of people to do that uh, on a consistent basis. Um, so the, the keys to success are call them right away. You got to call them a whole bunch of times and stay in touch with them long term. But this right. is actually um, the slide that shows what type of media actually converts. Over six years of, of uh, working internet leads and using all three of these forms of media, we still get the best conversion from, from the phone. So it's 74% phone call. 25% text message and 1% email. And that's where we're identifying an opportunity from. So again, all I, the leads come to us, we call them right away and we text them and we email them. And most opportunities we find come from a phone call. I freaking love this because I'll always say you guys, um, I mean, my team is a lot of millennials, but even if not, like even myself, um, I'm like, you should probably do something that nobody else does anymore. Mm -hmm. pick up the phone, you know, um, because we're just, we're trapped in this, this text message world, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and the thing about it is, is that realistically having a real conversation with somebody about what their needs are, you're going to get so much more from that than just, mm -hmm. um, a, a random text message, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, we obviously, you know, this, we do get response from text messages and so do you, yeah. but, but actually picking up the phone and having a real conversation. Uh, one of the things that you hit on, and um, I think it's really important to, uh, for everybody who's wanting to be in this space and succeed is to be the lead. Because just like you said, it's an emotional purchase. So you're catching them in that emotional moment. If you're, if you're getting a hold of them, you suggest within five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I know your team, I shop them sometimes. We get a call within two to five minutes. Yep. you're still catching somebody when they're in that space. But if you're calling them 10, 15 minutes later, I mean, think about what we're going to be doing 10 or 15 minutes from now, yep. not this, you yep. know? And yep. so it's like, you've got to get them then. And then I think the number one thing after that, that I see from my um, agents, and I'm assuming you see this in your, uh, the agents that you help is they only try one or two times and then they're done. Yep. Um, and it takes how many times usually to get a hold of them? Yeah, I mean, the I've got another slide here that shows some um, some data behind um, the number of attempts that you should be making. Mm -hmm. 
let's see here, got some some really fancy slides for you, so I'll cue them up. Um, but essentially, um, most people, you're right, they, the, the lead comes in, first of all, agents should be involved in higher income producing activities like meeting with clients face to face. So it shouldn't be that they're ready, ready and available to call lead uh, immediately within five minutes. So that's understandable. Um, but if, as you can see here from this graph, the difference between calling someone between just five minutes and 10 minutes, there's a 400% decrease in the odds of actually contacting that lead. So again, mm -hmm. this is, is an instant gratification, information overload society that we live in. Most people are multiple screen viewers. So if you think about that, what that means is you probably sit on your couch at, at night with your laptop on your lap and your cell phone in your hand and the TV on something else. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we're super overloaded with the information that, that we have going on um, in front of us and, and in our minds. And so it's, it's very much, again, I say it's, a, it's somewhat of an interruption of their shopping for homes and you're interrupting them to offer services. And I want to um, highlight some more information later on spring about that. But that's why we call every lead within five minutes. But as far as the number of attempts, this is the um, chance of making contact um, chart, which shows you that obviously the number of attempts, you're going to have a higher chance of contacting them. But here's the, here's the, but you showed, part. you showed after six, after you, it's more than six attempts is when you actually have close to an 80 to 90% chance of getting a hold of them. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, when, and then, yeah, and then when, when you compare that with what agents are actually doing, this is the average agent activity. As you can see, there's a huge gap. There's a huge opportunity there. Um, so, so 40% so of the leads actually get called back. I mean, I think that that is truth serum right there. That is why so many online leads can be sold, right? Because mm -hmm. agents aren't even calling back the leads that they're paying for. Yeah. Less than 40%. And then it, the slide that he just showed you guys that are um, listening to this, it is after that, even 40%, the second call attempts like 20%. So most of these leads are only getting called maybe like once or twice, if that, and only 60% of them not even getting called one time. And, they, and, and the, the, the user keeps bouncing from site to site because they have no idea what's going on because nobody's actually greeted them and let them know what information they have access to and how they can get uh, the resources that they need. So they just keep right. bouncing from site to site and just keep loading up all these registrations that keep getting sold to realtor to realtor and nobody follows up with them. It's so crazy when I'll have a client um, t text me and they'll be like, Hey, uh, I got a referral. Someone so referred me to you. And then they just start sending me uh, properties from like a billion different websites, texting them to me, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we're going to get you set up on our website. It feeds from everywhere. You don't have to have yeah. multiple searches, but like you said, the consumer thinks that, that each website has different properties, yeah. but they're going from all these different, when, whether they're Googling or on their local directory ads or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so really it's being uh, quick to respond, right? Yep. Um, calling multiple times. So your callers call up to 14 times, right? We to, yeah, we do 10 times in the first 14 days. Okay. Yep. yep. So 10 calls, times and, 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 and at that point, like if, you, if you're not getting a hold of them after that, then they're probably not a quality lead and it's, you're going to archive them and watch their, their traffic. Sure. But 10 times in the 14 days is pretty significant. So I know like with us, we have about a 13% conversion ratio from what comes in that you send back and say, Hey, these guys have raised their hand mm -hmm. and said, I want to buy or sell a home in the next 90 days. Right. Yep. So from there is our responsibility to take that and then get a hold of them again and really build that relationship and the rapport. And exactly what you said, I have this conversation with uh, new agents all the time. They're not hiring you. I mean, they're hiring you to help them find the home. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to buy the home that they want. They're yep. paying you for your services and your knowledge yep. and your expertise and to guide them. And yep. that's what you have to be selling them on, right? Yep. Um, and I think that's the biggest misconception that a lot of a lot of these a lot of the agents, when you start putting it out there to them, then they're like, "Oh my gosh, you're right. You just like it 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 resonates with them." But I don't think a lot of people think about it that way. Yep, yep. Here's I have I have the perfect stats to back up that argument, and this fascinates me because 
obviously we've been doing this for so long. Uh, I, there's been some changes in the industry, but there's still tons of people searching for homes online and there's still tons of realtors that don't follow up with their leads. Um, but one of the things that always fascinates me is year after year, the stats always show that people are just going to the web. They're self-serving themselves, their own information. They're finding the home that they buy. They're just using the realtor for what? I don't know. What are they using the realtor for? So I dug deeper this year on the uh, NAR um, statistics. And um, this is exactly, there's an, actually a question right there. It says, what were the benefits provided by a real estate agent during the home process? This is very, very important information. This tells you the value that your customer is telling that they see in your services. So right here, at the, I want to point out what's at the top and I want to point out what's at the bottom. What's at the very top is that they helped the buyer understand the process, right? Like wow. how mm -hmm. simple that is, that they helped you understand the process. Now what's at the very bottom narrowed the buyer's home search and expanded the buyer's home search. Wow. So that's, it's kind of opposite because a lot of realtors probably think that the value that they offer is like, oh, I'm going to help you find the right home. I'm going to send you some great property updates. I'm going to let you search on my website. But they're actually, when you ask the buyer, like, what, what value did you perceive from that? They, they don't value that at all because they're going to go out on the web and they're going to self-serve themselves the information that they want. They're going to seek it out and find it. But at the top again here, this is what you can do. Like I said, you can interrupt someone who's searching for a home and you can convey your value of these services. Number one, help point or help the buyer understand the process. Number two, wow. point out unnoticed features or faults with the property. Right. I can look, I can look online and go, yeah, that's the home that I want, but I rely on you, the expert to help point out the unnoticed features and faults with the property. Right. That's why you deserve your commission. And then number three, negotiate a better sales contract. Right. So obviously you want to help them save money or get better terms. And then number four, I love this one provided a better list of service providers. So Again, when, when they're, they, they get all the information's on the web, they can look at all the pictures, they can do 3D tours, they can do whatever they want, and they can fall in love with a home on the internet. But they need you to provide them with a full extensive list of service providers to help them with all their real estate needs end to end. That's what they rely on you for. That's where they see mm -hmm. value in the services that you provide. So if those four things, write those four things down, that should probably come up in the first conversation that you're gonna have with a hot lead. Hi, my name is Josh. My goals are to help you understand the process, point out unnoticed features, negotiate a better term on your behalf. And uh, I've also got a wonderful list of uh, service providers I'm gonna email over to you right away. <laughs> that should yeah. be your script right there. Yeah, that is so crazy. I mean, at the end of the day, it really is that helping them understand the process. Like that's mm -hmm. what I tell my agents all the time. Like they're, they're, help, they're hiring you to um, facilitate the transaction and help them understand it, you know, mm -hmm. understand the market, understand what to offer, understand, and then pro service providers, all of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's crazy though. I didn't realize it was that high. Mm -hmm. I did know that the consumer does not see any value in, um, in like the property search. Cause you can yeah. find that anywhere, it's free. right? It's, it's free. So mm -hmm. you've got it. You've got to be giving them not like, here, I'm here to help you. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Um, okay. So what do you recommend? Like I, I obviously, and I think you'd say the same, um, if they're in the internet space and they're really not understanding their ROI or, um, knowing if it makes sense, what should they, what do you think they should do? Well, we're always happy to do a free diagnosis for anyone. Uh, okay. we currently specialize in three different CRMs. We have uh, boomtown commissions, Inc and FirePoint. Um, so we have basically teams uh, here at Rockerbox that you know man those uh, technologies on a day in and day out basis. So we know them inside and out like the back of our hands. So we'd be more than happy to actually take a glimpse inside of your account and um, maybe point out some, you know, some unnoticed uh, opportunities and, and, and maybe kind of walk you through our process and, and how, it, uh, how it can align with uh, helping you get more deals because it really is simple. It's super, super simple. Would you agree, Spring? It's just yeah. a matter of waking up every day and doing it. Yeah, internet leads have been a huge part of my business. I mean, I don't, we don't have time to dive in this. This could be a whole nother topic. But when I transitioned markets and got into the residential resell market, I started a new construction resorts. I didn't have an SOI or a clientele. And so I started out with internet leads 
and that's how we've built our team. And ultimately, obviously, we have a ton of other lead sources at this point and whatnot. But it, it really was our foundation for a good three or four years. And so, and you were a huge pivotal part of that. But it is running it like a system, you know, and it is still a huge part of our business. Even, even the repeat referral business that we have comes from what we started out on the internet, yep. you know? Yep. And so um, I would tell them, reach out to Josh, have him look at another thing that's really working well for me right now is I do use the CSU platform and um, we put on our ROI tracker in the back end and how many leads we have coming in and I'm analyzing, does this make financial sense? And, and if I'm having these many leads in come in, I know that it makes sense. So if, if it's not, I know it's an end on my side, like an issue on my side with my agents not doing their job, right? Yep. I, I think one of the biggest things, so a lot of people um, contact me and ask for references on you mm -hmm. and your company. And um, I'm like, it's not the fix all. It, it's, it's awesome, but you still have to do your job as a leader or as a business owner and make sure your leads are still being followed up with when they get transferred over to you. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and that your agents are then providing great quality service. Yep. Um, but if it, I think that if they're thinking about it, dive in, connect with you or connect with any of your sales reps. Yep. Um, yeah. You yeah. can uh, just visit our website, uh, rockerbox.com. It's spelled R O K R B O X rock R box. Uh, or shoot me an email, josh at rockerbox.com. But you're absolutely right, Spring. Essentially what it is, like you had mentioned earlier, that your conversion currently is about 13%. So, I mean, the work that you're paying for is rather than looking in your Boomtown account and having to hold your agents accountable for 100 registrations, instead you look in your agent's account and in your weekly one-on-ones, you're, you're holding them accountable to the 13 actual opportunities that are people that can you can actually help influence their abilities to sell them homes. Yeah. And then, and then having them do other things, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Like with go the time out that they, with the time that they've houses. freed up from not having to yeah. scrub the other scrub. 90 people. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, yep. okay. Well, Josh, you're a freaking rock star. I love you so much. You are so, as well. Um, thank you so much. And if you guys didn't know, he's having a baby, a girl. <laughs> I, you, I don't know if you announced that to the world yet. I hope I didn't just announce it to the world. No, you just, you just ruined it. Did I really? <laughs> Oh God, that would be awful. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I love you. Tell Kate Ty for me. All right. We love you too, Spring. Right. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Proud to be the inaugural guest on your podcast. And you I'm have sure to it will invite me back every awesome. year on this anniversary. Still. Done awesome. and done. All, All right. right. Talk with you Thanks, Adios. Bye.